Hello, my name is Host Dirk. I am the host of Talking with Famous People. I am here with Famous People Callum of QB Sauce. And we're talking about the ISFJ personality type. I want to do an overview of sorts here, and it begins as follows. The cognitive function stack for the ISFJ is SIFE. Uh, S I F E T I N E. S I F E T I N E. That's introverted sensing, extroverted feeling, introverted thinking, and extroverted intuition. So, this is actually the type that's the dual of my type, the ENTP. So, it's a type that I also am familiar with well because my mother was an ISFJ. You know, type pretty well, I feel, and we'll describe them hence. Fourth, from now, right now, hereby, I will hereby describe them. So, first of all, they are a person who is fundamentally about constructing their own identity through time, managing themselves and their body as both a being who's got a schedule, stuff that's happened, keeping track of what's happened, uh, keeping track of what's going to happen, keeping track of details like uh, finances and uh important stuff that you got to do si stuff you know this is a very orderly individual as an introvert the isfj is one of the more extroverted of all the introverts that you might encounter isfj is somebody who uses extroverted feeling as their dumb as their main tool function so their main way of interacting with the society around them is using is being aware of and managing other people's emotions obviously that means they're going to want a lot of interaction with other people even though they're an introvert so what distinguishes an ISFJ from an introvert from an extrovert I think is that ISFJs like to schedule lots of little activities but they like them short and they like to come back home and rest and they don't want to be out and about forever and they get tired of the hubbub after a little while, after a certain amount of time. ISFJs are great caregivers. So if you have an ISFJ mother, then you were very well cared for. They don't particularly like conflict at all. And they're not particularly strict parents as a consequence because especially if you're an ENTP kid, you can kind of uh, push them around a little bit, which is, you know, unfortunate, but just sort of how things went. When you don't have those kind of perspectives to make a lot of wise decisions about this kind of thing, it just sort of happens. Anyway, uh, the ISFJ female mother is very much a an ideal mother in that regard. Very loving, very attentive to uh, keeping track of herself and her kid too. And they are quite vivacious, which is to say, they communicate really well usually at least engagingly because they've got that FETI combo in their two threes and that tends to make people be pretty engaging um, pretty engaging in their communications now the thing about the ISFJ they're not going to be quite so engaging as the INFJ from an ENTP's perspective um, intellectually, probably, because the INFJ is leading with NI, which causes them to have an entirely different kind of uh, framing for FE and PI than anybody else does. And that's why they're kind of like, uh, you know, the magic type. But, but ISFJ, nevertheless, is very engaging conversationalist. They're just not going to be talking about a lot of new ideas or have a lot of brilliant insights or something like that but they're going to be really fun to talk with. And they're going to provide their own kind of depth to the conversation that relates things to interpersonal histories. It gives it a quality of resonance and permanence and significance that other types don't necessarily invest into their activities. So, um, well, I'll just say a couple more things about the ISFJ, and then now that we've got a couple people in here, including somebody named Marcus, who 
I would like to type since he has some question marks after his type. Uh, I'll do that as soon as I finish up with the ISFJs. Let me just go ahead and talk about the shadow functions. So, in the fifth slot, which is the thing that they're going to be pretty damn good at, is SE. And that makes perfect sense because they, they're managing their own schedule. They're going to those appointments. They're doing those things. They're completing those little tasks. They're managing that shit. They're the person you want in charge of a household or a business in terms of the administration end of it. They will keep track of all that stuff. And they'll do it. They won't just sit around and muse about it. They'll do it unconsciously because it's in the fifth slot, but they'll do it nevertheless. And they'll be very handily people. Uh, then if we look at their sixth slot, they're going to be uh, FI. So FI is something they're going to be pretty competent with as well. They're not going to value their own feelings very much. They're going to say, uh, oh, we don't need to worry about that. We need to worry about those other people out there. They're going to say that a lot. But they're going to actually have a pretty good relationship with their own feelings when they need to. They're going to know how they feel about things. They're going to be able to utilize that effectively. Uh, in the same way that the ENTP is able to use TE effectively when it needs to. In the seventh slot, that's where the trouble comes in, which is they don't have that TE stuff. They're not good at controlling groups in particular. Uh, they have to learn to become effective at it. My mother ended up being a very good teacher. Even though she has FE, that's how they have to control the groups. They can't do it with, just with protocols. The problem is they're not, like I said, they're conflict important. They don't want to... They don't want their the external understanding of something to get in the way of their interpersonal relationship with you, and that's why they're weak in TE. Um, in the last slot, they've got NI, so that's their eighth. That's where they really get their intuition from more than their NE. Their NE is conscious but weak. Their NI is unconscious but pretty strong. A little loose though, so they may get truths that aren't actually accurate, but it provides them probably more utility than the NE does ultimately. And they get quite attached to their values and their, their single truths and stuff like that in a fashion of an introverted intuitor. However, at the end of the day, they're wonderful, wonderful people. And uh, ISFJ, if you are an ISFJ single woman in my demographic, uh, you should come watch Talking with Fans People. I'm looking for one. So, you know, I'm, I, I'm guessing that's not particularly the approved way of, of initiating dating, but. Uh, I don't know. It just seems like a logical thing to do. To point out the fact that... Because I would like to get a duel. I'd like to be in, a, in one last relationship in my life. And I'd like to be with my duel. My ISFJ. I've said all of that stuff now about the ISFJ. I will bid you adieu at the end of this video. As the person I was hoping to type has left. Um, but so regardless, this video has come to a close. So don't forget to eat plenty of cheese.